This simple push button circuit will give you a nasty output, something like that, loads of switch bounce. Adding a capacitor and a resistor will give you something like that. The bounce has gone, but you've dragged out the transition. This circuit, however, gives you a perfectly square output. So what is this thing called a Schmidt trigger and how does it work? Let's take a look. So this is the first circuit I showed, simple push button circuit. You've got to pull up to five volts. I put 39K resistor there as the pull up resistor. Now there is a reason for that and I'll, I'll come on to that later. And then you would wire this to your output, whatever that is. So this would go from a high state and then when you push the switch, this would all be pulled to ground and then that would go to a low state. Let's have a quick look at that on the bench. So there you go, there's the 39K resistor pulled up to five volts. I've got five volts coming in here onto my rails. Then rather than using a push button switch like I've got here, I'm using my timer relay device. Just saves me keep pressing away. But actually these switches behave quite well. The bounce on them is not that bad and it's quite difficult to get a good measurement off that for demonstration. Whereas this relay, yeah, it's quite naughty and gives you lots of bounce. So all I do now is I connect this battery in. Uh, before I do that, let me connect up my scope. So we want that to be onto my ground first of all so it gets its zero volt reference and then to the what would be the output there so that's currently at five volts and then when this switches it'll be pulled down to zero volts or ground and then if i just connect up battery to this that all this is doing is powering that okay so just connect that on and it's triggering away so let's have a look on the scope so there you go there's the output from that circuit with the resistor pulling the output high and when you press the button it pulls it down to ground but you can see all kinds of stuff going on here so let's do a single shot of that and there you go look at that it's all over the place straight down to zero volt straight back up to five down to zero five down to zero and then you've got all this glitching over here it's horrible so how long does that go on for well the glitching seems to continue on quite a long time after it's finally decided to stay low but you've got all this glitch in here, it's not very nice at all. Let's see uh, how long that is. So I've put my cursors on and we'll just move across here. So we started back over here by the looks of it. And then move this, sorry, move this one. Well, if we say from there, that's uh, 170 microseconds. If you take all this noise into account, then you've got 370 microseconds before it's settled down in that in that scenario in that instance that i did it if you did it again you get some different pattern okay so this type of circuit is not very good at all then it gives you all this nasty bounce and your outputting device whatever you're wiring that into might be a logic gate might be a microcontroller or whatever is going to behave erratically when you've got this kind of behavior going on you could mitigate that in a microcontroller and put timers in, say, if you've changed state in the last 100 milliseconds, well, I'm going to ignore you because somebody wouldn't be pressing the button within 100 milliseconds. So the obvious way to absorb all of this switch bounce then is to add a capacitor like this. So you have a capacitor here and a 1K resistor I've shown there. And when you press the switch, this will discharge the, this capacitor plate back down to ground slowly. And just quickly, let's just see that on the bench as well. And there you go. There's my 0.1 microfarad capacitor there and my 1K resistor and the switch going across it, of course. This capacitor is shorted to ground on one side. The other side is going to the output. And if I put my scope probe on that output there, let's have a look at what we're getting. So there you go. This is the output now driven with the capacitor and the resistor added. It's oscillating up and down being driven by my relay. If I just do a single snapshot of that, I'll do it on a low, going low, there you go. So it's captured it now. And there's no now bounce on the, on the switch. You could, yeah, that's been eliminated. The capacitor is softening all of this out. You can see that there was bounces here and here, but the capacitor is holding the charge. It's not dramatically dropping up or dramatically raising back up again. And if we just measure the 
drop the full time on this. Let's put my cursors on. The cursors are already on. Let's select them. Let's bear with me. There we go. So uh, it's ending. Yeah, it was probably already on it. It's ending about there, I'd say. So it's over 600 microseconds to fall from the high to the low value. So this circuit's a lot better now. We don't get the bounce, but we do get this kind of drawn out change in state. And there is a, still a chance that your microcontroller or your logic chip, whatever you're connected into, could oscillate between one state and the other during this transition. Now, if we add a Schmidt trigger to our output, as I've shown here, then this output will become quite stable, as you will see in a second. Just to note though, this circle here means it's a it's a not gate on the output there. So this is an inverting Schmidt trigger that I'm using. So let's just go to the bench and have a look at this version. And there you go, there's the Schmidt trigger device there. I've taken the previous output from this capacitor and resistor. Just drag that across on that leg there into the one of the Schmidt inputs. And now if I plug my scope probe into the corresponding output, which is there let's have a look at that so there you go this is it running with the schmidt trigger the relays causing it to go high and low every second and if i just capture a single shot there look at that perfect nice square no bounce going on at all and if i just zoom in a, a bit you can see it's not exactly square but it's pretty quick so let's just measure that get my cursors up and let's move across to this one it starts about there, uh, sorry, that one, and then it ends about, about there. So what have we got? 79.5 nanoseconds, that time to completely drop down to zero volts. So as you saw, this thing called a Schmidt trigger gives you a really nice clean square wave output like that. The chip I'm using is this. It's a TC4584 Toshiba component. Let's have a quick look at the data sheet. So here it is, Toshiba data sheet for the TC4584. In this particular IC that I was using, there are six Schmidt triggers. You can see them there, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then you put your supply in here, your positive here and your negative there. The supply this particular chip can accept is, let's have a quick look, uh, DC supply, anything from 3 to 18 volts. And I was powering it at 5, so absolutely fine. But the key thing with Schmidt triggers is this here, hysteresis. Well, what is hysteresis? Let's have a quick look at that. So just to look at what hysteresis actually is, on my chart here, I've got voltage on the y-axis going up and down here. And across the bottom here, I've got time on the x-axis. Now what hysteresis does is it has two thresholds. So there's an upper threshold that I've indicated by this green dotted line here, and a lower threshold, which is another green dotted line here. So if we assume we had an input signal that's all over the place as we as we saw and it's doing all this kind of stuff uh, let's assume at this stage we've got a output of the schmidt trigger as high once it gets to this point it does nothing it's still it's still high but then once it gets down to here and crosses this path now at that point because it's reached a lower threshold it will go to low and if I get a little glitch here like that, it won't then switch back to a high state because it hasn't reached the upper threshold. So let's get it all the way down to here. Then you might it might stay there for a while and then back up. Okay, it's still low because it, it hasn't reached the upper threshold. Up here, up here, it's gone switched now above the upper threshold so it go to a high state. And if it glitches down, doesn't matter. It hasn't reached a lower threshold. So it kind of gives you a nice buffer window, if you like, that can ignore all these glitches in the incoming signal. All right, brilliant. And before we wrap up, let's just look at why I chose a 39K pull-up resistor here. It's a bit of an odd value, I know. And the reason is that when you use an Arduino, a lot of my viewers use Arduinos, I know, then the input pull-up, obviously you've got an internal resistor in this chip pulling this input to the 5 volt rail. 
So what value is that internal pull up? Well, the Arduino data sheets uh, are not very precise. I think it says something like it's guaranteed to be 20 to 50K or something. I want it to be representative of that. But I bench tested it and let's just have a look at how I measured it. So there we go. There's a Arduino Nano Every and I've configured pin two to be an input pull up. So this, this input here has a pull up resistor internally in this chip pulling it up to five volts or what it should be five volts and i've got a jumper wire here so if i set my meter to volts the ground is connected through here to my meter and i've connected up the ground from the arduino so all of these grounds are coming up together so if i just measure there now see what i actually get is it five volts or is it something slightly different and as expected not quite five volts 4.8 volts say so now if I connect this into this potentiometer, which I've wired the middle leg to ground and put this to one side of the potentiometer. Now all I have to do, if I can get my probe in here, is adjust this potentiometer until I get half of that. So if I get that down to 2.4-ish, 2.4, there we go, yeah, that's good enough. Now, we, all we have to do is pull this out. I'll use this and we'll just measure what that was in ohms. So I'll set my meter to ohms. And we've got 37 kilo ohms. So the internal pull up resistor in here, when you consider this circuit now to have been a voltage divider when this was in, the internal pull up resistor in here must be about 37 kilo ohms. So that's why I chose my 39K pull-up resistor there. I just wanted it to be representative of an Arduino configured as an input pull-up. So that's how you can use Schmidt triggers to significantly improve and eliminate the bounce of your push-button switch or relays or any other kind of switch. And indeed rotary encoders because they, they are switching very rapidly for a mechanical or optical type switch. Hope you liked this video and if you did then please click the like button and if you haven't done so already then please click subscribe. Alright, catch you later.